coronavirus. Facts, not fear, starts now. Good evening, I'm Mike Montecalfo from WDPRI in Providence, Rhode Island. Thank you very much for joining us. It's accelerating, that's what the word is tonight from the World Health Organization on the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. The agency said deaths around the world passed the 16,000 mark today. In the UK, Prime Minister Boris Johnson has issued a stay at home order for the entire country, limiting gatherings of no more than two. More than 1.5 billion people have been urged to stay home or try to blunt the spread of the coronavirus. That's one fifth of the world's population. Here in the United States, the CDC is reporting more than 33,000 cases of COVID-19 with 400 deaths. On Wall Street, stocks fell more than 580 points, finishing the day down 3%. As bad economic news continues, President Trump acknowledged the country was not built to be shut down, and his administration is working on next steps to get people back to work. Now, Democrats and Republicans seem to agree that the government should send checks directly to most Americans to get them through the coronavirus crisis, but the debate continues over how much, how often, and how long. Trevor Shirley has more now from our Washington, D.C. Bureau. It would be a fast way to get money into most Americans' hands. We all recognize getting money to people who are not receiving a paycheck is important. Texas Republican Senator John Cornyn supports the idea. Well, I think we all feel the need to act quickly to get money to the people who are, uh, through no fault of their own, out of a job and, and a paycheck. As does Ohio Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown, so long as workers in need are prioritized above corporations. If we're going to do a relief package, the money needs to go in the pockets of workers. Questions remain, though. Who qualifies for relief money? How much is sent? And is this a one-time event? I sort of see it as um, as something that's immediately uh, immediately necessary given the circumstances. Jonathan Bidlack is a fiscal policy expert with the nonpartisan R Street Institute. He agrees the measure is needed fast, but says it's not clear if the government would issue money several times or just once. That's really a question for how uh, how the economy looks, you know, a couple of months from now. With more workers going without a paycheck, Bidlack says right now sending checks to Americans who qualify is a dependable way to stabilize at least some part of the economy. The, the biggest advantage right now is that it's a quick way to get relief to people who actually who actually need it. Trump administration officials have already said Americans with high incomes won't be eligible for relief money, but at this point it's not clear when Congress will approve the relief package. Reporting in Washington, I'm Trevor Shirley. President Trump is taking aim at hoarders and price gougers. His press secretary, Stephanie Grissom, tweeted out that the president has signed an executive order to prevent people from hoarding supplies needed in the war against coronavirus. Grissom said, quote, we will not let those hoarding vital supplies and price gougers to harm the health of America in this hour of need. Meanwhile, another major city is going under lockdown. This time, it's Denver. With more information from the Midwest, let's go live now to Erica Gonzalez from KDVR in Denver. Hi, Erica. Yeah, good evening, Mikey. Right now, both Denver and the city of Boulder issuing those stay-at-home orders. Both of those will begin at 5 o'clock tomorrow evening, and they should last through April 10th. So here's what we know about these orders. Grocery stores getting medicine and exercise with social distancing are among the exclusions for those orders. Not included, though, are liquor stores. Restaurant delivery and takeout services, as far as we know, will remain available. Now, we also know there are several companies stepping up in this battle against COVID. COVID-19. Well, today, the Colorado governor announced new partnerships with local businesses. Fox 31's Kristen Hobrick has more on that story. This is the sound of innovation. As the coronavirus continues to spread rapidly, healthcare workers are facing a shortage of medical supplies. I'm trying to see if there's a way that we can help on all, all fronts. That's where the Yosha family comes in. I probably have... 15 machines running right now. They've turned their 3D printing business into a manufacturing site for protective masks for doctors and nurses treating patients with COVID-19. I can produce about 100 a day. So here's how it works. This is a design of one of the masks. Yosha sent this design to this 3D printer that's right now making a prototype for a local hospital. 
In two hours, it's done and can be shaped to your face. Now, Yosha says another benefit is these can safely be reused. When they go from one patient to another, they clean it and sterilize it and go on to the next. Right now, Genesis Plastics Technologies in Greeley, a company called upon specifically by the governor's task force, is mass producing plastic face shields. From the face shield side, we can produce five to six thousand per hour. Um, the oh. challenge here is the halo ring, which the face shield attaches to. Mm -hmm. And currently, as a bridge, we are having those items 3D printed. Genesis is calling on 3D printers across the state, like Yosha's, to help print halos until they can get to a higher manufacturing process. Companies coming together with the goal of saving lives. We take this as a challenge, first of all, um, and as an honor to be asked to be a part of it. Kristen Hobrick, Fox 31. And of course, that was Fox 31's Kristen Hobrick reporting. I'm Erica Gonzalez reporting in Denver. All right, Erica, thank you very much. As the entire state of New York remains under a stay at home order, celebrities are hoping their star power will help influence New Yorkers to follow it. At the request of Governor Andrew Cuomo, they recorded a PSA for the governor's office. The star studded video features Robert De Niro, Danny DeVito, Ben Stiller, and Lala Anthony. Now, the state mandated workforce reduction is having devastating effects on small businesses in New York, many of which are hoping they survive. Reporter Mary Wilson from WT. TEN in Albany spoke with two long-standing non-essential businesses about how they're coping with the closures. Businesses are dark, streets empty, and outside most storefronts hangs a note or a sign, sorry, we're closed. It's very scary being a small business and not knowing what to expect and, and where this is going from here. The shutdown of all non-essential businesses went into effect last night and flower shops didn't make the cut. Cheryl Knott and her mother have owned Maloney's for 32 years, but the Waterford shop dates back close to a century. If someone's going through a devastating time with a funeral right now, flowers are being what they're going to really kind of need. Nutt says she still has about two weeks worth of flowers on hand, but no way to sell off her inventory. If uh, you can deliver food, I would hope that we could deliver flowers. Bars and restaurants deemed essential by the governor can still provide takeout. The same does not apply to non-essential businesses. Even before the shutdown, the shop had been slow with weddings and parties called off. We have Easter and Mother's Day which are holidays that, that florists we depend on. Not doesn't have any employees, but Felthausen's florist and greenhouse had to make 15 layoffs between their two locations. I do object a little bit to the arbitrariness, it seems, of who's essential and who isn't. And uh, specifically, like liquor stores and beer stores. Mark Felthausen says the state's list of essential businesses is somewhat haphazard, but agrees his business is not one. I think the funeral directors think I'm essential, and some of my customers think I'm essential, but we got to get real and make decisions that are for the greater good of the. Uh, of the country. In business for 106 years, Felthausen says they'll survive. The Maloney's is determined to stick it out too. It's buckle down and see what we can do. Surrounded by bright colors and beautiful bouquets, she only wishes she could share with others. We're all going through a real difficult time now, and flowers do make people smile no matter what. Mary Wilson, News 10, ABC. Mary, thank you. North Carolina's governor hasn't gone the route of putting the state on lockdown, but he did make a major decision today. And Angela Taylor from CBS 17 joins us now live from Raleigh with the latest there. Hi, Angela. Well, hey, Mike. Yeah, so Governor Roy Cooper not announcing a shelter in place. However, he did make a big decision about our school system. We have learned that classes will be out until at least May 15th. Now, it's important to note that normally our schools don't get out of class until mid-June. And so we're just waiting to see what the State Department of Education will decide if whether or not our students or our, our children are going to learn online or if they're going to open up classes, uh, schools back up during the summer. So again, at least May 15th. Now, the 
the other news out today, the governor mandating no gatherings of more than 50 people. Now, we have heard this before, but state leaders say that people aren't listening, so they're issuing this again, no more than 50 people. Also, by 5 o'clock on Wednesday, all hair and nail salons, along with gyms, are being ordered to close. Again, we already know that restaurants and bars are closed right now, except for curbside dining. Now, some hospital systems, such as Vidit in eastern North Carolina, have requested the governor go further and order that people do shelter in place. Here's how the governor responded to that today. As a state right now, we are preparing for every scenario. Right now, we're not issuing a stay-at-home order, but the situation is constantly evolving. We have taken action to close a number of businesses that uh, provide for co close contact where it's hard to have social distancing. Now, the governor said he's trying to remain optimistic that schools will reopen at some point before the end of the year. Again, we know he's working with the State Department of Education to make that happen. Now, the state also released new numbers today. They have tested about 8,400 people. And remember, we have four different places testing people for COVID-19. Now, out of that 8,400, 344 people have tested positive. And with all of this new information, uh, the governor saying we'll probably see more cases in the future because there is more testing that we just have to be vigilant about what's happening. One other quick update, Mike, that we have here is that anybody that's brought into the Wake County Jail, which is where we're located in Wake County, the offenders must be in quarantine for at least 14 days and they will be remaining in single cells before they can be put with the general population. Mike. All right, Angela, thank you very much for that report. One of the biggest issues nationwide is the shortage of PPE or personal protective equipment for health care workers. And Honeywell's facility in Smithfield, Rhode Island, will begin producing N95 masks, which have been in limited supply for weeks. President Trump announcing the deal on Sunday. The move will bring 500 jobs to the ocean state. Honeywell has tasked the recruiting agency Manpower with the hiring effort. Meanwhile, Rhode Island's governor is getting tougher with travelers. Kim Kalun has the details. Well, the governor says about half of Rhode Island's coronavirus cases are connected to travel. And while she is not closing the state's borders, starting tomorrow, she is ordering anyone arriving back to Rhode Island via airplane to stay home for two weeks. Anyone returning to Rhode Island by plane must self quarantine for 14 days. Governor Gina Raimondo expanding her executive order related to travel on Monday, now ordering anyone returning from international or domestic destinations to self-quarantine upon return. I know that there are a lot of Rhode Islanders who've been on vacation, who went to visit family, who have had a hard time getting home. We're hearing from you. Um, come home. You know, we, we want you to come home. I'm getting asked that a lot. You, Yes, of course, come home. But when you arrive, Ramondo says starting at 7 a.m. on Tuesday, you'll be greeted by the National Guard at TF Green. Passengers will be asked for their contact information to ensure they're following the rules. It's in order to keep you safe and to help us put a lid on the spread of this disease. Ramondo says she's not planning to restrict ground travel at this time, particularly in light of Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker's order to close all non-essential businesses come Tuesday. Because Massachusetts has done that, I feel that it's safe at this time not to close down our borders um, because that will substantially cut down on the number of people leaving Rhode Island to drive to Massachusetts to work. The governor says she's trying to balance public health with maintaining some semblance of an economy. And while she notes there's been a sharp reduction in revenue, she had this message to share. The state's not going to run out of money. Uh, it's going to be very, very difficult. But it isn't something that Rhode Islanders should be worried about. And another big question the governor says she's been getting is about child care, particularly with schools and daycare is currently closed. She says she will have specific guidance on that issue at her press briefing tomorrow at 1 o'clock. At the State House, I'm Kim Kalunian, Eyewitness News. From Rhode Island to California, some people are apparently having trouble with the governor's stay at home order. Samantha Cortese and Andy Reesmeyer from KTLA join us now live with the latest from the West Coast. Hi, guys. Hi. 
Thank you, Mike. So the coronavirus death toll in California has risen to 35. Seven of those are in L.A. County, where as of this afternoon, there are now more than 500 confirmed cases. Riverside County has 45 known cases and six deaths. Dr. Barbara Ferrer of the L.A. County Department of Health says the new data should be a warning to young people who think that they are immune. I want to note that 80 percent, 80 percent of the cases are happening for are, are people who are between the ages of 18 and 65. Fully 42 percent of the cases were happening in people between the ages of 18 and 40. This virus can, in fact, infect people across the board. Of the people tested so far, 10 percent are testing positive for COVID-19. In Washington state, Boeing has suspended production due to the ongoing crisis. Washington cases top 2,000. In Oregon, 161 people have tested positive for COVID-19. A stay-at-home order has been issued for that state after crowds popped up at beaches and parks over the weekend. Those who do not comply will face a misdemeanor. Here in California, 2,065 people have been diagnosed with the disease. Elon Musk says Tesla is retooling its factories to produce ventilators to help with some of the strain on the healthcare system. And in California, safer at home restrictions have been tightened after large crowds were spotted at local beaches and hiking trails over the weekend. People who were not observing social distancing rules to stay six feet apart. With not much of anything to do around town, people went to the parks and beaches and trails. Videos and photos from Malibu, Santa Monica and Hollywood showed people gathering to exercise or play sports. State leaders noticed and they're not happy. L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti reminded people why it's so important to stay home. Don't take risks. Don't mess around. Don't be selfish. Your decision to not physically distance yourself may kill someone. This isn't just about you. It's about all of us, everyone. Governor Gavin Newsom has ordered all state parking lots to be shut down in L.A. County. All trails as of today, including trailheads and parking lots near trails, are closed to limit exposure. Additionally, boardwalks and beach parking lots are closed to limit access to public places. Law enforcement officers will be monitoring these places to remind people they should keep their distances. Mayor Garcetti also announced that all restaurants and bars that serve food can deliver alcohol as well. And billions of dollars in funding have been pledged. The U.S. Navy hospital ship, the Mercy, is heading to the port of Los Angeles. It will be here in the next few days. It has 1,000 beds on board. Mayor Garcetti says it will become the biggest hospital in the city. To be clear, the ship will not be used to treat coronavirus patients, but rather those with other injuries and illnesses, freeing up space in other hospitals for COVID-19 patients. And across the state of California, efforts to increase testing are a primary concern. Uh, 25,000 tests have been conducted so far. L.A. City Councilman David Rue says a South Korean company will provide up to 100,000 COVID-19 tests per week for L.A. County alone. The kits will all be free. Priority will be given to healthcare workers. The Department of Health says mass testing will help model trends of how the virus is spreading and if the containment efforts are working. That is the latest from the West Coast. Back to you, Mike. Words from the mayor, Samantha Andy. Thank you very much. If you're going stir crazy, spending time at home, here are some social distancing friendly activities you can do. You can take a family hike or a jog, head into the backyard and play with your kids or even the dog. If it's raining like it was today here in southern New England, there are still plenty of free exercise videos on YouTube or social media. You can even download a workout app. Many of them are free. And even though their doors may be closed, some gyms like Planet Fitness or a streaming free fitness classes online. Finding ways to stay active isn't only good for your health, it may also help relieve some of the stress you're experiencing. Kansas City also is going under a lockdown. John Holt from Fox 4 in KC joins us now live with more on that. John. Hey, Mike, hello from Kansas City. You know, here in our metro, just under four hours away now from they're not really calling it a lockdown, a stay at home order taking effect. They say it's a kinder way according to local government leaders of labeling it rather than something like shelter in place or lockdown. They want you to stay at home and unless, and there are a lot of exceptions here, you work at an essential business, including car repair shops, restaurants, even liquor stores. You're going to get groceries or medicine. You have a doctor's appointment. You're caring for a loved one or you're getting outdoors for exercise. Just avoid that, you know, that six foot uh, 
area there. Today, the Kansas City Police Chief made it very clear in a news conference. Officers aren't going to be stopping you on the street. Police won't be enforcing the rule necessarily, but the chief did say his department is accepting donations of masks, even forehead thermometers. We don't have enough. We, we would like to have those for not only our own employees, but some of the people we're coming into contact with. Um, so if anyone has that extra, we're asking for extra here. We're not asking for people to go without. A lot of folks here in the Midwest have already been staying at home for a week or longer. A lot of business already closed. We're starting to see some festive displays popping up in neighborhoods. Folks trying to lighten things up a bit. Kevin Werner, he lives near St. Louis. You can see his house all decked out, started with Christmas lights. Then he just kept pulling stuff out of storage. I'm stuck home with the kids. Uh, we're, we're, we're getting a little stir crazy, so we just started. We'd heard some of the people were doing it, so we just started putting things up. And we just put one thing up. One thing led to another. Now it's a holiday smorgasbord on his front lawn. Even his neighbor across the street joining in for the fun. Again, at the scene near. St. Louis. A little bit of positivity there. Lord knows we need it, right? We have about 100 confirmed cases in this five or six county metro area. Health experts keep telling us our curve is just starting. The mayor telling me tonight he thinks it's about two weeks and then we may start to see things drop off. That stay at home order for the seven county metro is in place for a month. That gives them two weeks sort of a, a cushion, so to speak. Mike, back to you. All right, that seems to be a familiar theme across the country, too, John. Yeah. Thank you very much. We'd like to remind you what the symptoms of coronavirus are. Doctors say it's shortness of breath, a dry cough, and a high fever. If you're feeling symptoms and think you could have the virus, you should call your primary care doctor or call ahead before showing up at a walk-in clinic or hospital to give staff time to prepare. It can be extremely easy during these unprecedented times to get overwhelmed or depressed about the impacts this pandemic is having on all of our lives. Today, Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker tried to put the situation in perspective. Please take a listen. As we all know, purpose is what drives us. Purpose is what fills our souls. Many feel lost, and I can see why. But here's the truth. We all have a role we all have purpose as we battle this disease. Protecting one another from the spread of COVID-19 by limiting physical and social contact and staying at home is profoundly purposeful. And speaking of purpose, check this out. This will put a smile on your face. Even though schools are closed, teachers in Bentonville, Arkansas, wanted their students to know they're behind them. A caravan of teachers rolled through the town while students cheered and waved. And of course, they were also practicing social distancing. Schools will be closed through at least April 17th. Well, our goal of our next star family is to make sure you continue to get the latest facts on the coronavirus without the fear. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow night with stories from across the country. For now, I'm Mike Montecalvo. Thank you very much for joining us and please stay healthy.